Today on Sugar Spun Run, I'll be showing you how to make hot chocolate bombs. Hey Sugar Spun Bakers, Sam here, and today I am so excited to be bringing you another carefully tested, well-researched, and perfected recipe. You've probably seen these hot cocoa bombs floating around on the internet. They are super popular right now, so I'm really excited to share this one. I think you're going to love it. For today's recipe, you will need silicone molds. These are about two inches in diameter per mold, and I have two sets of these because we'll be making six cocoa bombs. I also recommend you grab yourself a thermometer, that way you can ensure that your chocolate comes out nice and smooth and glossy. You'll need a high quality chocolate, one that has a high percentage of cocoa, I'd like to keep it above 55%, and you want there to be cocoa butter in the ingredients as well. I do talk about some alternatives to using chocolate bars over in the blog post. I also talk about using milk chocolate and white chocolate. So if you're interested in any of those alternatives, you're definitely going to want to check out the blog post. Of course, you need filling for your cocoa bombs. We're just going to be using hot chocolate mix today. You'll need one fourth cup of mix total for all of these bombs. If you'd like, you can also fill them with mini marshmallows and sprinkles. So I have some of those ready today as well. Okay, so let's start melting our chocolate. I'm using chocolate bars today, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut this into really small pieces. Now, I just like to use a large knife and go over the chocolate in a mincing motion because I wanna get it to be really, really fine. We'll transfer our chocolate to a medium-sized heat-proof bowl. We're going to be melting this chocolate in the microwave, but I wanna to talk to you first about tempering. Don't freak out if the word tempering has ever made you nervous when it comes to chocolate before because it's actually really easy and I wanna show you why we're doing it. So right here I have some chocolate that I prepared earlier today that I did not temper. You can see those white streaks all over it. It kind of has almost a chalky exterior and it's actually starting to melt in my hands really quickly. Compare this to the chocolate that I prepared earlier that I did temper. You can see it's not really melting in my hands. It's nice and smooth, it has a pretty sheen on it. This is why we're tempering our chocolate. Today we are using our microwave to temper our chocolate. We're making things super easy. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this in the microwave and melt it for just 25 seconds. So after 25 seconds, not much has happened, but you still wanna pause and stir your chocolate. We want this chocolate to melt as evenly as possible. And most importantly, we do not want it to get over 91 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'll take this back to the microwave and I'm only going to heat it for another 15 seconds. And then we'll stir again. We'll just continue to do this, heating our chocolate in 15 second intervals until we begin to approach 90 degrees. Now it's also important that your chocolate be hotter than 87 degrees Fahrenheit, which is where our thermometer comes in. Now this chocolate is not quite there, as you can probably tell from looking at it, so I'm just going to pop it in the microwave for a couple more seconds. Near the end, you may only need to be microwaving in five second intervals because you really don't want to overdo it or you have to start completely over. Our chocolate is near 90 degrees, but it's not completely smooth, but I'm not going to put it back in the microwave. I'm just going to continue to stir it until all of those small pieces of chocolate in there melt, and they will melt if I just keep mixing. So we've hit that temperature sweet spot. We're between 87 and 91 degrees. So now we can start filling our molds. You could use a small offset spatula or even a paintbrush to fill these molds, but I personally just like to use a spoon. Now I'm just going to spoon a small amount of the chocolate into that mold, and I wanna make sure that I'm getting up the sides. In fact, that's one of the most important things you can do is make sure you thoroughly get the sides and you want the layer there to be nice and thick. People have the tendency to make that lip right there really thin, but then when you go to pop these out of your mold, they're actually going to break. Now, if I'm trying to get a little bit more detailed, sometimes I will switch over to the spatula. And just to make things easier for myself later on, I'm just gonna take that spatula and swipe down the surface so I have a nice clean edge. If your chocolate's starting to get a little bit firm, go ahead and pop it back in the microwave for about five to 10 seconds. But remember, keep it in that temperature sweet spot. Once I filled all these molds, I'm just going to pop them in my fridge for about five minutes. You are not done with your chocolate yet, so don't toss that out. So that firms them up really quickly. Let's go ahead and take a look. So right here, I didn't get all of the edge, so I'm going to go ahead and get that now. Here's where I'll usually use the paintbrush, but again, you can just use a spoon. If there are any small holes in the chocolate, you definitely wanna make sure you fill those as well. These have had some time to sit in the fridge, so let's go ahead and take a peek. And what I just love about the silicone is the chocolate comes out so easily. And look how smooth and shiny that is. We need to get these chocolate halves to stick together and we want to do that as seamlessly as possible. My favorite way to do this is just to grab a small saucepan and place it on the stovetop over very low heat. Now once you can start to feel the heat coming off of that pan, we're just going to take one of those shells and just really briefly run it over the pan. Just enough so the surface just begins to melt. You can see that little chocolate ring it left, that's perfect. So I'm filling these with about two teaspoons of cocoa powder mix. And of course, I'm adding some marshmallows as well, as many as I can fit in there, basically. 
Now grab another one of your chocolate half spheres and we're gonna do the same thing and just briefly rub that on the stove top. So now we have two nice smooth surfaces. So while this one is still hot and melty, I'm going to immediately, carefully and gently press it on top of that half that I just filled. Just hold it together for a second and you're still gonna see a little bit of a seam, but I mean, come on, that's pretty good, isn't it? The most fun part of these is decorating them. If you are so inclined, you can drizzle them with some white chocolate, which is what I am doing today. And then while that's still melty, I'm just gonna add some sprinkles on top. Now to actually use these, you're just going to wanna drop them into a mug and then pour super hot milk over top. Of course, you wanna stir everything really well so that cocoa gets nicely dissolved. And that is how you make these super cute, super fun, and incredibly popular hot cocoa bombs. I cannot wait for you guys to try this one, and I can't wait to see your photos on Instagram of how you've decorated them, so make sure you tag me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. 